ASA firewalls, basic configuration, ASDM part 2. Let's go back to ASDM. We covered monitoring in the previous video. In this one, we'll focus on configuration and some tips. The idea is to show you what's really important in ASDM before we go or you go to and uh, set up more advanced options. Configuration is divided into five main sections device setup firewall remote site-to-site -site vpns and device management again the easiest way to learn is just to go through all these options again i want to show you the most interesting ones and maybe things that uh, you have never seen first of all that is a screen that is available on an ASA 5505 because we can you can see switch ports yeah ASA 5505 has got a built-in switch routing what I want to show you is static routes and when you add you can add IP SLA that is a very popular topic is a CCNP topic CCNA security will not ask you to do that. CCNP security will. Here you can decide and create a tracked object. You have a lot of monitoring options. I encourage you to play with it and see how it works. Of course, here you can add static routes and a default route as well. You can ask, okay, uh, where is your default route, mate? And well, I don't have a default route here. Any idea why? Real world labs, right? Why? Well, I I receive an IP address from from my ISP using DHCP, and a default gateway will be sent by them as well. It is a good moment to show you command line interface here, and I can type show root you will see the default root that was learned by the ASA using DHCP when we go to tools one of one of the things that you have to take is preview commands before sending them to the device it means that if you make a change then you will see these commands yeah, for instance, I will add network 1110, go to 222, two, two. yeah, and then when I apply, I will see this command. Of course, you can reset and go back. Okay, firewall, we'll spend a lot of time talking about firewall rules and not, I will not get into details the idea of this video is to show you how to use ASDM yeah what what is important here and again I encourage you to go through all these options it is some basic threat detection yes you can buy a module or a license for your ASA and enable IPS however even without that an ASA can detect some basic DOS attacks and that is a screen that allows you to set it up then we go down to vpns we have two sections remote access vpns and side to side vpns again we'll spend a lot of time talking about uh, both screens here it is important to know where you can find them in the remote access vpns we have network that's client access VPN and clientless. Yeah, here we can create any connect and IPsec VPNs in go away. In this one it is a VPN portal. All options for portals are here where you can create bookmarks, customization and some some more advanced features. We'll cover a lot of these things in 
the dedicated SSR VPN videos. Okay, now I want to go to device management and show you a few things that you need to know. Here management access, a very important screen that allows you to decide well, ASDM should be allowed from this or that IP address and interface. Then what is important is SNMP. Not sure if I can show you. Oh yeah, it's not going to show you that. <laughs> Good. Well, if you watched my CCNA uh, real world labs, you know this string anyway. But uh, at least ASA will not show you that. That is a screen that allows you to add SNMP options. I'm not sure why I have so many allowed. Okay, fair enough. Okay, uh, licenses, of course, that's pretty obvious. And users. You can create AAA server groups and local accounts. That is my Wi-Fi account and you can ask why do you use a strange username like that well a good and unique username can be like a password guys right of course Wi-Fi is not a sophisticated username but if possible avoid using admin or administrator right because it's pretty easy to guess I know Wi-Fi is not a sophisticated username I can argue it's better than admin, right? And privilege level is zero because that is for my VPN access. And test user don't even know what why I created that. And then that's a bad example. I have admin. Yes, don't don't use it. <laughs> uh, let me check DCP because I said I had DCP running. Oh yes, right. Yeah, there is because I have an ASA. I have another firewall behind my ASA, and yeah, there is there is a DHCP server. Of course, you can enable all these options. I didn't when I set it up because I don't really need them. It is like a backup connection for me because ASA is my edge firewall, and then I have another firewall. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you. I know it's, oh, it's pretty obvious. We know all these things. That's good. I want to make sure that when we go to more advanced labs and scenarios, you will not be surprised when you see, oh, how did you know VPNs were here? Oh, where can I change or create my account if I need that? I hope these two videos will help you and again all i can tell you and advise the real world labs right is play with it go through all these options of course if you're studying for for your certification exam then it's even more important because cisco can ask you to uh, set up a feature or you know do some troubleshooting steps and so on using ASDM as well. That's why it is important to understand how it all works. The last thing I want to uh, discuss here is file management. I'm pretty sure you know a TFTP server and all options available. It's okay, you can set it up. But there is a feature like that in ASDM that allows you to create folders, send, download, upload files, manage everything that you can find on your ASA. A nice feature, take advantage of that. You go to file transfer and then you can browse your local PC and upload. If you want to download, delete anything, you can do it from here. You can delete, rename create new folders, manage your flash on an ASA file. In this video we talked about ASA ASDM. I showed you some basic configuration options and again I encourage you 
to play with ASDM before you move to more advanced labs. Thank you very much.